I think I hate when I've been for a fitting and they say hit your club first. So I'm like, yeah, but you're just going to take that date. He said, I'm going to Guy. I'm going for my first fitting next week. I trust the pro will be fitting me. That being said, what questions should he ask and is there anything I should know? So I know we've done a lot of questions on fitting before, but typically it's about like a fitting's overrated, blah, blah, blah. But this one's actually quite a good question. He's going for a fitting, which is fine, you should do. So what should he ask? Well, I wrote a couple of notes before of things I should think he should kind of ask or have in mind, and then we'll see if you've got anything to follow up with. First one, sounds obvious, have a rough budget. We had a question a couple of weeks ago where somebody said they got fitted for tailor-made irons. Talk, talk about brands seeing their ass about comments that we Well, do you want to mention that or not? Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. A, so in two... A couple of weeks ago, we talked about... I like it you take the lead on these things. I can't get in trouble now. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about a store and your experience is working at that store. Yes. Um, I had a phone call from one of the big chiefs from that store. There's a CEO. CEO saying that he wasn't happy with my comments. Yeah. Well, your comments. I threw you on the bus. That's it was, fine. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't you. It wasn't me, sir. <laughs> but that was the truth. That's what happened. So and at the end of that conversation, we said that said store has changed its tactics and are we doing did. better. Yeah. But when Guy worked for them, this is what he found. Well, that was it. We said, or I said, seven, and I've watched that video back about three times just to double check, well, triple check. I said, I think, towards the start, middle and end, I believe, and I, well, I know the store has changed because I've, I've spoke to staff in there. And um, we, we we didn't slander them. We just said my experience from working for said retail. But actually, having said that, once that phone call was taken place, and they, that was, again, they weren't happy with it, but they didn't say take the video down because it was true. But then I thought... Well, I did talk about lawyers and Syrian and stuff, but... Yeah, but between us, we can write a decent letter. <laughs> um, how Do you think, though, and this is what I thought about, should, then I think said retailer now, there's a flat commission, so therefore it's not biased to any particular brand. Yeah. But actually, should commission be allowed at all? Now, I don't, this is obviously not great to listen to if you work for a retailer that makes commission in golf. But let's just say you're working at a retailer... And last year, I came for a fitting with you and I bought a set of Titleist T100s, okay? I then come in this year and go, Hi, Eric, um, you fitted me great last year for those irons. I want to try the new version. I know there might be much difference, but I want to see what they like, and I try them. If you know you only get a commission for selling that new set of irons, are you not going to be inclined to sell them anyway, regardless if they're not right for the actual consumer? Yeah. I, I've always said you should pay for a fitting. Yeah. I honestly and think... that's where the profits, correct. the commission or whatever's made. You should pay for a fitting and... Not astronomical prices like Taylor made a, char- a t- Titleist charging at that Woburn place. That's a, like a mad five hundred pound thing. Um, but like, if it was fifty pound for the fitter's time or the pro's time, and their job is to fit you, mm-hmm. their job is to tell you what clubs are going to best suit you in your budget. And that's what got us onto that conversation about said retail store is because the guy emailed in said he felt like he was being pressured to almost buy expensive irons. Yeah because there was never a budget explained or discussed, let's say. Where if you go with, spend £50 on the fitting, you you maybe don't get that money back, but that fitter at the end of the day says, no, the clubs you've currently got are perfect for you. Or actually, if we just put a slightly thicker grip on your clubs, you don't need to buy new clubs. They're great for you. Like I feel like then you get rid of this kind of tacky sales pitch where it's like, oh no, the new such... Irons are going to make you hit the ball 10 yards, 20 yards further. Oh, are they, in reality? So I, I agree. I think commission should maybe be looked at differently. In, but I do honestly think as a fitter, you should get paid just a fee. And then that so fitter more honest and, isn't isn't influenced by you buying clubs. You know what else you to do as well, though? <laughs> One more last thing. We might take this out if you don't want me to say it. But um, when I worked there, not only was there a commission structure, often the top salesman in the business of a cert- selling a certain brand would be like a holiday and the store manager would as well. So let's just say that a, a golf, and this used to happen from all the brands, not just any particular one, they would have a month where it's like, right, February of 2012, the person that sells the most, whatever brand, there's going to be a holiday to Dubai. And that's a store manager. So you can't tell me the store manager is going to tell all the staff, oh, make sure you sell Callaway this month or t- Titleist because another brand who's going to give the top store a holiday to Dubai. Yeah. But anyway, so... And, but apparently, legally, that doesn't happen anymore. Well, I don't know on that one. Apparently it doesn't. I, well, I've never actually been told about that one. The commission's apparently definitely changed, which we said. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, have a rough budget in mind. <laughs> My it's, phone's going to be blowing up again. Well, whatever. Um, well, that's it. Whatever. What are you going to do? 
<laughs> uh, go and watch your notes. Have a rough budget. Yeah. As I said that about three times now. But there's no point trying to set a vines for 1,200 quid if you've only got 700 quid to spend. Obviously, some people might go in and think, yeah, actually, those ones for 100 quid more are a bit better, etc. But you need to have some level of rough budget, even for the fitter's own like, kind of sanity. Yep. There's nothing worse than when I used to work again in a retail store and someone says, I want a new set of irons. Okay, well, how much have you got would be my first question. How much do you want to spend? Oh, I don't mind. Well, these are the new whatever irons, 1,400 quid. Oh, no, we're not spending that much. It, it, but again, it'd be a bit like going into, a, into an estate agent and yeah. saying, I want to buy a new house. Yeah. Okay, have you got a budget, sir? Uh, no, that's fine. Well, Rick Shields still in this house. It's only five point two million. Oh yeah, I'll do. <laughs> well, that's it. Like you can't just you can't just say I've not got. But like everybody's got a, a bu- at least a rough budget. You know, you used to get the most on footwear, weirdly, because yeah. people come in and say, "I want a new pair of golf shoes." Okay, well, what's you know, most people I want comfort. I want good level of like traction. And at the time, Echo golf shoes were like unbelievably comfy, but they were dear. She go, "Well, this new Echo shoes two hundred quid." You go, well, "I'm not spending that." So, I'm not saying that people should spend that, but you need to know the budget. That yeah. was the first thing I put down. Next thing I put was, know the if this is for irons in particular, know the lofts of your current clubs and take them with you. So if you're trying a new seven iron and you're ripping it longer than your seven iron, but actually it's a six iron or even a five iron loft, maybe try your own out against it and, and see what the difference is then. It is one launching better or not, but you've got to compare apples to apples, in yeah. my opinion. Um, also, I've put, like, be honest with yourself. So most people now you know, understand that most golf brands make good equipment. But we also often, not everybody, but we often have brands that we just like for whatever reason. You might have a favourite golf that uses that brand or a memory as a child from using a certain brand. So if you know deep down that you want, like, let's say, Mizuno or Titleist, but on the day you hit the TaylorMade quite well as well, and the guy's going, oh, you know, TaylorMade, you're hitting those good. Obviously, if it's massively outperforming, then get them, clearly. If it's very much level, but it's a, there's something, you, oh, you should go with the brand that you, what you really do want, I think. Because yeah. if you spend a lot of money on a product, you want the one that you want. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I agree. And we all know now that no brand makes a bad club, so you can't really get a bad one. Um, also, another one I've put, this is difficult, but is it possible to try that club on the golf course? Mm. Because it makes such a difference. And also, as well, it's all well and good for the average consumer going, oh, that drive you're hitting five yards longer or ten yards longer or whatever, but going onto a golf course and actually driving it past a tree you've never out, got it past before or clearing a lake you've never cleared, yeah. that makes a big difference. Huge. And then lastly, this isn't important for everybody, but I think something people should know, see this comment a lot, is do your own research and have a rough idea of when those brands release products at what time of year. Because, for example, Taylor made release in January, February. If you went had an amazing Sim 2 fitting on the 4th of January and then it came and you got it delivered two weeks later and then the next day the new one's announced and it's the same price... You would feel a little bit like, would, it, or, or even the other way of looking at it is, stay two weeks later and then buy it when the old one's discounted. Yeah. So have a rough idea of when stuff's out yeah. if you if you bothered. Some people aren't. Um, and if I miss that, you think the only thing I would add on to that is I feel like normal fitting, get invited to the bay, take your club out, whack a few of your own first. Yeah. Let, let's just say a driver for for this example because it's easier. You stood there, you're nervous, you're cold, you're not warmed up, you start whacking your driver, okay? Yeah. The fitter is taking all this data. They're taking all your good shots, all your bad shots, and just keeping that to the side. They've got that as, like, backup evidence then to go, anything we hit past this point yeah. is better than this crap yeah. that you've just hit because it because you weren't loose, you were nervous, every, everything else. Now, that's fine. Hit those tenors warm ups with your own driver, that's fine. And then start hitting other products. And then once you feel like you've got the product that suits you the best, go back and actually compare it against your driver again. Yeah. So tell the fitter to write, wipe everything, wipe all the data. Yeah. Let me do a proper head to head test between my driver that I know I can, I'm warm and ready to hit now. Yeah. Let me hit 10 and I'll tell you the shots I want taken out or don't. And I'm going to hit 10 with so true. My, the new driver. And again, then you can proper compare it. That's a good point. And you'll get a point there where you'll go, okay, so these, there's now five yards of difference compared to maybe what you've been in, told it's 25 yards of difference because they're using those crap warm-up shots compared to your most recent shots. That makes sense. It does indeed. So that's the one thing I hate when I've been for a fitting and they say, hit your club first. So I'm like, yeah, but you're just going to take that data. You should almost say, let's say a club that's not, remotely anything you're going to get today but we'll just give you a warm-up club a yeah. gener- just make a generic warm-up club yeah. that's like a random brand doesn't have yeah. a logo on it yeah you warm then, up with that because then obviously the fitter needs to know information like club head speed and ball speed and flight and everything else yes that's important but they shouldn't be measuring then straight off distance on that okay. uh, I did-